You guys, this dog hasn't been able to be around other people in over three years. And my goal is to get this dog into group class with 10 other dogs in three days. The, the same old story, you know, positive only, three different trainers, no results. I called him. And he ran over and also punched her twice. The other trainers that you had worked with, had they been able to work with him? No one has ever been able to hold a leash. This is serious. This dog has a bite history. Normally, I'd like to see the dog owner work a little bit so I can figure out the mistakes that they're making to help them. But because of the dangers this dog presents, I have to take the leash immediately to get to work. And then you can let go of the, cool. So I'm gonna start working with him. I want you to ignore him, okay? So he, he's basically like, okay, you're gonna save me now, dad, right? And again, me taking that away from him and off the table is gonna allow him to think clearly and, and be, you know gain confidence that he can work with other people. Sit. Okay, free. Good job. Good heel. I want people to be able to come over to the house. I have a friend come over once a week for a beer, you know, and we'd have to sit outside. Because of him or, okay. So I'm gonna teach you how to not have to do that at home. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did, did you guys just hear that? This guy has to have a conversation with his friend outside. He has to go outside of his own home just to talk to a friend. Now, to be fair, look at this dog. I don't think anybody wants to come into this house anyway. Now the next step is gonna be a little bit more realistic. We're gonna go back out front and we're gonna try to get this solved. We're gonna try to dig into this a little bit deeper to help these guys out. Good. And then correction. Now use your body, take your left leg and walk towards the coffee here. Now come right back. Good. Come. And then stop. We're not trying to take away his ability to show emotion. We're just letting him know when it's appropriate to show that emotion. Now, if you guys know anything about dog body language, you understand and see that this dog is stressed, but also understand that this dog was stressed three years ago and a year ago and before he came in on the way here and as he's here, he is going to be stressed. And my goal is to simply break this dog out of his shell by group class. And I just wanna be clear that yes, he's stressed, but it's part of the process for him. Did you see and hear that? That's just an air snap. So he's just like, get out of here. That type of communication is like absolutely brilliant to see because he's being so clear. So again, we're not trying to say like, hey, don't care about these people. But by Saturday, we're gonna enter, we're gonna enter these situations continually without reaction or with way less reaction. Now, in order to get to group class successfully and safely, we have to get to the problem. And the problem with Moki is he's insecure. Why is he insecure? Because he doesn't have enough guidance and leadership at home. A dog that needs a job that doesn't get one creates, you guessed it, insecurity all day. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, Tom, how do you build a confidence in dog? How do you make a dog more secure in themselves? Well, he doesn't have really a great relationship with the dog, and so some things we're gonna do is we're gonna tell the dog to sit, yay, good job, tell the dog to down, yay, good job, start adding in some of these environmental stressors that he has a problem with. So by recreating their relationship, ultimately their confidence with one another and making sure that the dog knows that Andy's in charge is going to help them moving forward to get to our group class. Settle. Good boy. Good settle. Say. Good settle, buddy. Uh See where that down kind of gets a little hard? When you have an implied down on your place with a dog that's a little nervous, you're going to limit your ability to have the dog place on things. Like if I wanted him to settle on here, it would be difficult. But really I'd want him to just jump up on here. So if I had the place is just go here, then I can add the down where it's appropriate. Okay. You know what I mean? Moki bed. Sorry to interrupt, but do you guys wanna win a one-on-one -on -one online training session with me? All you guys have to do is like this video, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell, and we're gonna announce the winner in the next video. You guys have to remember, Border Collies by nature are working dogs. And not only just working dogs, high class working dogs. These dogs are supposed to be out in fields chasing animals that are four times the size of them and pushing them into the direction that the rancher or the farmer wants them to go. So remember, all dogs are supposed to be doing something. They need a purpose, they need a job. If you're having behavioral problems with your dog, audit how much your dog is getting both mentally and physically. And remember, no bad dogs. Sit. Good, good. Leave it. Correct. There you go. Leave it. Good. 
I'm gonna sit back down. All right, you guys, I wanna break this down a little bit for you to see exactly where Andy went wrong to hopefully help you out at home. So over here, the dog starts to growl. Andy is hunched over the dog and he's really hollering at the dog very emotionally. What you wanna do is stand up straight, have confidence and assertiveness, have that clarity, dog, leave it, correction. But we don't wanna hunch over and try to overpower the dog physically and uh, verbally. So hopefully this helps you guys in the future. I know it helps Andy. You should be standing just like that, and if he reacts, leave it. Don't try to like hurdle him. Leave it. Leave it. Perfect. Literally perfect. Okay. That was exactly what you should be doing. So, Kaysen walked in the room, he growled at Kaysen. You corrected him for that, you said that's inappropriate. She literally can live, that's okay for her to live. So he's like, oh, okay, that was a correction. You walked forward, Kaysen's still right here, he didn't growl, you paid him. Oftentimes people will say that correcting a dog when they react towards something will make the dog not like the person. Right. And you're, you're actually not correcting the dog for anything other than acting inappropriately. Correct. Did you guys see that reaction there? Andy handled that so well. Compared to this reaction we saw in the beginning, I think these guys are ready for group class. So you can give him lots of communication as you're moving through. So as he's moving through all these distractions and stuff, you just want to encourage him and let him know he's doing good. You guys, they did it. I am so proud of Andy and Moki. They came in, they crushed their goals, and within three days, they have a completely different outlook on life. Now, the dog isn't completely trained, but they are in a much better spot than they were before. Right, Lakota? Leave some love for Andy and Moki down below, and thank you again, Andy, for trusting me and helping your dog. You know, when you think about it, doing the same thing over and over and over without any results is what they call insane. I saw Tom, you know, on the YouTube, and I said to my wife, we gotta try something different, and this guy looks like he gets results, and um, I'm proof that, you know, that's true. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you learned something from this video to make your relationship with your dog the best that it could possibly be. We put videos out like this every single week. Do us a solid favor, hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next week. Bye.